Hey guys, welcome back to part two of my how to patch antenna basics, I suppose. And uh, well, I guess as you can tell, we are in CST Studio Suites. I guess that's what they call it now. And uh, well, today I'm going to be showing you guys how to a model the patch antenna, b simulate the patch antenna, and c optimize the patch antenna. And uh, I'll let the stress the importance of optimization. It is important because um, if you saw part one, the equations can only get us so far in terms of design. Uh, and it's kind of up to us to further optimize the design to get to our target bandwidth, our target resonant frequency, performance, etc., etc. And uh, that's what we're going to be focusing on today. Uh, so let's, um, let's uh, take the first step and input all the parameters into the parameter list over here. Um, which is pretty much everything that we calculated in part one. So let's go ahead and do that now. Alrighty, so we are back, and as you can see in the parameter list, we've got all of the parameters that we've calculated. We've got patch width, uh, patch length, dielectric height, um, copper height, which is pretty important. Uh, typical one ounce copper is 0 0.035 millimeters, so we're just gonna go with that. And then we've got our ground width and ground length. And with those parameters, we can immediately start uh, modeling. So I'm gonna go ahead here in CST and define our patch first. So our patch will be needed P32, patch over 32, uh, patch length over two, and then copper heights. And for our material, we're gonna go with just typical annealed copper and click OK. Boom. There's our patch. You can see it's far from square, but uh, hopefully it works. And now we can go ahead and make our substrate. Uh, again, uh, the substrate and the ground have the same dimensions, so we can use the ground dimensions for the substrate and be fine. So we go to oh I forgot to define substrate height. Um, I know I didn't. There we go. I just called it something else this time. And like I said, we're going with uh, four three fifty this time. Oh, it's B. I don't know why I said C in the last video. Um, three point six six. Okay. All right. So there's our substrate. And for me, my manufacturer actually has a different dielectric constant of four three fifty B. So if we go into the component tree and click the substrate and then click edit materials. Instead of having 3.66 of a dielectric constant, mine's actually 3.48, which is what I calculated for. And you want to do that as well with your FR4. Just make sure that there's general consistency between your dielectric constant in the simulator and what you've calculated for. Otherwise, you'll get really weird results. And uh, yep, there we go. We're looking pretty good. Now let's go ahead and build the ground plane. I messed up again. There we go. And for the ground plane, we're going to do PEC or perfect electrical conductor, just because that's often what CST defines as ground. So we'll just go with it for now. And we're now going to go ahead and save this. And boom. Okay. So now in our primer list, we have the equations, or not, the, not necessarily equations, but the expressions for the proposition. And I'm actually gonna go ahead and put the equations up on screen right now so you guys can see them along with a plot so you can tell where exactly the probe will be positioned. And once you've got that down, we're gonna go ahead and translate those values into the sim on CST. So uh, it's pretty pretty easy. And you're going to want to do it a specific way so that when you do parameter studies, it updates correctly every time. So you're going to start with a cylinder, put it just about anywhere, and we're going to call this the probe. It's going to have an outer radius of 0 0.9 over 2 because the diameter of a typical SMA connector is 0.9 millimeters, and um, over 2 will get you the radius. Inherently. Leave the inner as zero, 
Uh, the U center, which is the x-axis, is going to be our px. The V center, which is our y-axis, is going to be our py. And then obviously we just go for the usual here and make sure to make it uh, copper. Select um, cancel for that and boom, there is our probe. Now you'll see that it's in the ground plane and that's not very good. So what you'll want to do is select the ground plane, boolean, insert, probe, enter. Now it should not have that effect. Uh, but there is still a problem and that's that they're touching and that's immediately a short circuit so we need to fix that and that's not too hard to fix we're just gonna add a part with no ground plane around this and this is pretty easy to do we're just gonna call it the no ground I guess why not uh, we'll make it 0 0.9 so that way it's twice the diameter as the probe itself again same diamond or same positioning, um, and then for the W min, pretty much same as ground plane, and then for this, we'll make it um, the Rogers. So boom, we end up with this. Hit cancel again, and then immediately we're gonna go ground plane, insert, no ground, and then no ground, insert, probe. Boom, there is our probe all set and ready to go. Next up, we're going to define the port in which we'll feed it. So go to PIX. Oh, I did that wrong. Sorry, guys. Pick that. Define the waveguide port. All right, so this is where it gets a little finicky. Uh, basically, what I do is add a delta that covers uh, part of the ground plane. So, oops, sorry. So something like this, and the reason I do that is so that you can have um, the port cover the ground plane, so that way it covers both the, the probe and the ground, and that is pretty important, uh, in my opinion. Okay, and boom, there is our port. All right, now I'm in the student edition of CST, so I need to change my mesh properties real quick. Sorry. Um, but if you have the normal version, you won't have to do this. Okay, cool. So now we're pretty much good. We're again in a frequency domain solver, 4 to 6 gigahertz. Make sure you normalize to 50 ohms. And after I turn this off, don't, if you have the normal version of CST, do not disable this. Uh, but if you have a student version and you're, you know, strictly limited to 20,000 mesh cells, then you're going to have to disable this and kind of figure it out. All right, so now we are up and running, and I'll hit you guys back up with the results. Okay, so it's done now. Sick, no errors, always good. And the first thing I'm gonna look at is S parameters because that usually gives a good telltale. So right off the bat, using just the equations that we define, we already have negative 12 decibels of insertion loss at our target frequency at 60 gigahertz, or almost our target frequency. And you can see here that it's a little messed up on the Smith chart, right? I mean, that's a little off frequency uh, here. We had a marker. This seems to be, yeah, 6.02. Anyway, it's not perfect, but it's close. And, you know, this is what I was forewarning you guys about in the first video, is that your first try, you're not going to get uh, perfect results, but you'll get some. Okay, so now let's go ahead and look at the far field at our 6 gigahertz here. And I'm going to go ahead and show the structure and transparent the far field. Boom. Okay, so immediately we're getting decent patterns like that's normal pattern right there and I'm gonna change this to realize again and you know 3.95 dBi of gain is not bad it can obviously be improved but it's not bad and if we actually look at the cuts of this let's start with the 90 degrees I mean look at that that's got a you know a main direction which says down here one degree so that's pretty center um, and then if we look at this Another, and again, one degree, so that's not bad. And now I'm gonna show you guys how we can use parameter sweeps to optimize this patch antenna design. Okay, so the first thing that we wanna do before we do a parameter sweep study is change these to the exact value. So patch with number four is 4.176, as it says it right here on my mouse's. Change, OK. 
K update and then this guy is 3.11 or 1015 3.115 update again okay so those have to be literal values they can't be expressions if you want to do parameter studies so now we have that out of the way we're going to go to modeling uh, sorry that simulation and go to parse sweep new sequence new sequence sorry new parameter and generally um, the x location of the pro where it's a quarter of the way through or halfway of the x-axis from the origin if you consider the origin the center of the patch is accurate so we want to change on our first run at least py and we'll range from two to four and we'll do like uh actually we'll go from like 1.5 to like 4.5 and we'll just stack these runs up and this is going to take a little bit of time so i'm going to start it now um but once this collects all of its data points we'll be able to see how the y of the probe affects its input impedance. All right, so we are back from our parameter sweep and we are looking at the Smith chart that reviews all of the results. And uh, yeah, there are some uh, clear winners and some clear losers. And um, the first one that caught my eye is this uh, magenta one that almost passes through one here. It looks beautiful. And uh, I can't tell if that's the 2.4 or the 4.5, but considering that the 4.5 is kind of extrapolated from the center, I'm going to assume that this is the 2.4 one. And I was right. This is indeed the 2.4 one. Let's go ahead and take a look at this one. And there we go. So, we got a curve marker. 6.019, not that bad. And you can see it's getting around to negative 25 um, decibels of insertion loss. And that's really not that bad. In fact, we can further approve upon that with a second parameter study. If you look at our parameter study you know, results here, you can see that they're incremented by 0 0.3. But if we do another one that focuses with a center of 2.4 and do 0. let's say 0 0.05, then we can do a bunch of really minute sweeps, uh, sweeps sorry, that may get to our you know, target insertion loss. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to go back here and do um, another parameter sweep. This time, again, if 2.4 is our target, we'll go from 2.8 to, to 2. And um, we'll actually take that back. We'll go from 2.1 to 2.7 because that's where those are. And we'll do another, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, we'll do. Ooh, 12, 12, how about that? All right, I'm gonna start that up, complete the current results, and um, I'll let you guys know um, what uh, the results are. All right, so our parameter sweep, our second parameter sweep has finished and uh, is a, you know, a pretty big spike that just immediately catches my eye. I know it catches your too, because just look how big it is. And uh, we're gonna break down these results real quick. All right, so the big one is this guy, 2.26364 for PY. And look at that, that's like negative 60 decibels. Look at that, oh man, that is beautiful. Oh, that is just awesome. Um, and it is, it's beautiful. But the problem is that it's not exactly perfectly six. Now, I'm okay with that. I'm not gonna go, you know, change around more parameters because the problem with okay if I keep this p this probe y position but then I go and change the length or the width or the ground length and the ground width well then I have to change the probe again so you can't just kind of tweak one knob at a time well you can with the probe but everything else no so if we want a perfect 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 50 ohms it's it's gonna be at 5.9952 gigahertz. But if we want like a perfect six gigahertz, well, we don't have, you know, we can make a compromise. Look at this guy, this is perfect six gigahertz, but with like negative 30 decibels of insertion loss, which really isn't that bad. I mean, that's that's manageable. So I like that actually. Um, which one was that? Oh God, that was, I think it was, what am I looking at? Oh, linear, that's why. 
I was like, that was scary. Okay, this value. So we'll, we'll copy, what is it, 2.2099. 2 well, we're not gonna be able to manufacture that exact number, but we can get close. Okay, so there we go. And now let's go ahead and simulate just this. All right, so we're back. And as you'd expect from this run, pretty much the same as parameters. Um, and let's let's take a look at the the barcode cuts here. So, not what I wanted to look at. There we go. Okay, yeah, look at that. So realize again, we went from three point, what was it like three point two decibels up to like five point thirteen dBi of gain. That's really good uh, for a patch antenna. Patch antennas typically don't go above 6 dBi, so keep that in mind. So 5.13 is is fairly good. And uh, I guess we already had a spoiler on this. But oh my god. Um, hello? Hello? There we go. Um, yeah, it looks like that, uh, the phi is still 1 degree off, and then um, I... I don't know what this is doing, but I'm not going to mess with it. And then we can look at the surface current again. For this. Alright guys, so thank you for watching. This concludes the patch antenna basics of simulation and optimization of the patch. And um, yeah.